Hey everyone, welcome back to Video Games and Literature. This is lecture number two for week number two. Uh, today we're talking about uh, your readings for this week, uh, Ian Bogos' A Slow Year. Uh, I'm going to give a short lecture on reading video games and then talk about this week's tasks. So the reading this week is Ian Bogos' A Slow Year. Uh, to get a copy, you need to go to this website that's listed here uh, and use the a uh, little purchase uh, widget in the middle there. So folks, this is where you need to go to get a copy of Ian Bogos' The Slow Year if you haven't done so already. Uh, he talks a little bit about the game, but if you scroll down right here to this widget area, uh, put in email address, uh, and then use PayPal or Amazon Payments, you can buy a copy for uh, about $8. Uh, you'll get a copy of the game, uh, which will play on any platform, so uh, Mac or PC. Uh, and a copy of his ebook, which is the other part we're going to be reading. You can also view his trailer if you're interested in the trailer for the game. <clears throat> so, reading games. Uh, first, a little bit about the history of video game studies. Uh, when video games first started being uh, interesting to academics because they were uh, more uh, available and uh, started to uh, sell a lot of copies, uh, challenging movies for box office totals and so on, uh, academics started to pay attention to them, uh, and it was right at a time when film scholarship was really well established, uh, and so people who knew a little bit about how to talk about film uh, and had been trained as literary scholars would say, hey, these basically just look like interactive movies, so I know how to talk about these, and so you got a lot of scholarship with people talking pretty much only about uh, the stories or the narratives in the game and not ignoring the parts of the game that were more game-like. Uh, this led to a, uh, re what would you say, response, a <laughs> revolt uh, by uh, folks that knew a little bit more about games and designing game systems uh, who pushed back really hard to emphasize the parts of games that were gamish. Uh, so uh, one thing that uh, folks have uh, observed right away is that games add to uh, the representational systems that they have, the phenomenon of action. So if you have a movie, <clears throat> it's uh, images and sound, uh, games also have uh, action. It's not only player actions in, in the sense of pressing buttons on a controller to move figures around on the screen. Uh, those actions are facilitated by machine action. So uh, a computer that is uh, has a bunch of parts in it that are moving, <laughs> that are running algorithms that set up the rules that then produce the things on the screen that you're interacting with. So uh, there's a lot of stuff that uh, has to happen, a lot of activity that goes on uh, to make video games work. And so when we talk only about game narratives without paying attention to uh, the action uh, that facilitates them, uh, we're really missing uh, a good portion or, of what makes games what they are. Uh, games, for example, are, are rule-based systems uh, that are expressed in human-readable uh, narratives. You know, the fact that if you look at the difference between uh, something like Skyrim and something like Tetris, Tetris doesn't really have the narrative overlay that we get for Skyrim, and it's not really necessary, but you might imagine adding that kind of narrative to it. Uh, in fact, if you've ever played anything like uh, Dr. Mario or something like that, which is kind of like Tetris, but with this layer of Mario in the doctor outfit with the coat and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, each Because it's a rule-based system uh, in which people sort of play around, each performance is going to be a little bit different, so it's hard to make absolute statements about what happens. For example, you may be someone that plays Halo, uh, and rather than fulfill the story point to point, uh, you load all of your grenades into the backseat of a warthog and start launching as far as you can. Uh, somehow, the way you talk about the game has to account for both kinds of experiences. Uh, so even though uh, you have this, in a sense, an open-ended story, it's not completely open-ended because the system is always in place. If you're playing Prince of Persia, for example, you can run around killing all the sand monsters in your own special way, but you have to get to a certain checkpoint where you get the narrative that then allows you to go to the next checkpoint. It asks for input, but then it's input in a system that exists and is going to run the same way no matter what happens. I mean, no matter what you do, even if you drop your controller, the game's going to react and, and process your input. 
So another factor in uh, reading games is the fact that there are multiple knowledges you can imagine uh, going on at the same time. Uh, you can get a the kind of master knowledge of operating the system, uh, the kind of knowledge that you would put like in a guidebook or a Let's Play video. Uh, you might have the kind of knowledge that you would require to uh, role play a story well or enact a story uh, if you know role playing communities uh, that try not to break character when they're playing. Or you can write the kind of things about video games like uh, I write, me and Bogos writes, which try to critique the cultural significance of what's going on uh, when you're playing. All of these are different kinds of knowledges and all of them are validated by these systems and they all kind of interact and depend on one another in order to work. So that's really complicated. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that uh, Bogos attempts to explain in his uh, ebook along with a slow year uh, are some ways to think about or, or one way uh, to think about how reading a poem is like playing a video game and the concept he comes up with is excavation. So in this quote he says, in poetry the reader's eyes pass over the words that once animated the poet's ideas and experiences. The mind assembles them into scenarios which it then animates in secret. In video game the player's hands operate the lost instruments of the designer's tiny secret society. A player is the archaeologist of the lost civilization that is a game's creator. Play is excavation. To play with the makers of our games is to play with the ghosts that once animated the systems they leave us, whether they be temporal, vortexes, or petals, or plums. And if you remember the reading from last week, you should recognize the reference here, the petals on a black bow uh, in Pound Station at the Metro, uh, the plums that, we were, that were eaten <laughs> that we're supposed to be saved for breakfast that are cold and delicious in William Carlos Williams' poems. So this idea that you come across uh, the poetic object, be it a game or a piece of literature, as an archaeologist that has to dig into or excavate uh, the artifacts of this lost world uh, and then try to reconstruct them and play around with them and imagine how they fit together and think about how we relate to them or how we've come from them. So that's one is interesting idea uh, as a way to think about what is going on when you play a game. It's a kind of dig site, <laughs> if you will. The activities I have for you this week are set up to help you try this concept of ex excavation, to, see, to try it out, see how it works, see how it produces meaning or helps you produce meaning or uh, read or respond to a game as you might respond to a poem. So in that light, uh, what we did last week with poems was to annotate. So we're going to try annotating this week. Since it doesn't really work the same kind of way where I, I can't put the game into a, into a uh, <laughs> Word document for you, uh, we have this different system this week. So we're going to be using a, a software called Coggle. And so if you go to uh, coggle.it, so Coggle it, uh, not .com, just C-O-G-G-L-E dot I-T, and hit enter. Uh, it'll give you the sign-in screen. You can sign in with your same Google account that you use for Google+. Uh, there, I have already invited you into an organization called Video Games and Literature. When you uh, see there, there'll be a... Co when you find Video Games and Literature underneath it, there'll be a list of coggles that you're invited to, and one of them should be called uh, Slow Year. And once you click on that, the instructions for operation are going to be on the left. So I'm going to pause the video now and uh, show you how that works. Okay, here we are at coggle.it. Uh, you'll notice here, C-O-G-G-L-E dot I-T. Sign up using Google. It'll then allow you to select your account uh, and add in, uh, sign into your account like usual. I'm already signed in, so I can do it like this. It'll give you a display that looks like this. It should look identical to this. And you'll have an item here called a slow year uh, that I've shared with you already. Click on that. It'll give you uh, the Coggle, which is a mind map software. As you can see, I've already made titles for winter, spring, summer, and fall. Uh, when you're uh, ready, uh, say you just finished playing through the winter section, you can click on the plus sign. and It'll give you another little title. say I write cold or whatever, and then that'll add uh, the branch. You can come back here, keep 
adding branches, as many as you like. Add branches down here. You can add branches to your branches. Uh, and this should all work collaboratively. Uh, if you're confused or uh, want to know what the instructions are, they're all here on the left. It'll show you the, the shortcuts and also explain how to make things happen. So like if you need to remove stuff, say, look, I don't need this one. I don't care which one I want, this. You can do that. I don't want any of those. Oh, now it's created a whole mess. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, you can play around with this, see how it works. Uh, if you make a mistake, it saves version history, so we'll be able to go back and fix stuff. And uh, try it out. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but this is what we're going to use to try to annotate a slow year. All right, once you've annotated uh, a slow year sufficiently with your classmates, uh, your weekly post this week is to excavate one season of a slow year. Pick any of the four seasons, whichever one you like the most. Go through our process of free writing, going back over your free writing to... Uh, pull out the most relevant or interesting information, annotate it, then well, you will have already participated in the annotation, and then compose your post. Uh, 300, 400 words, as usual, by 10 p.m. on Friday. If you want to try to find or use screenshots, uh, if you want to make your own screenshots, go right ahead. That'd be great. So again, your tasks this week. Uh, your reading assignment is the ebook and the game, uh, collaborative annotations on Coggle, Post a discussion question by Wednesday at 10 p.m. and submit your post by Friday at 10 p.m. Again, if you have questions, you can email uh, email them to me or post them under support on Google+. Uh, one note, uh, I'm going to be out of town from Wednesday until Sunday at my brother's wedding, uh, so uh, I may not be as quick in responding to you if you send me an email, uh, but I will uh, be checking email while I'm gone and checking in on the discussion. Uh, it may also be a little late with the video for next week, uh, but I hope not. I'm going to try to get it up on Monday as usual. Uh, but again, thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, make sure to uh, post them somewhere I can find them. And have a great week, and happy Memorial Day.